Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on this summer day, um, taking your time out to share this moment with us at The Journey Within. Welcome to this morning service. Uh, my name is Minister Bonnie from The Journey Within. And with us today is Reverend Joe Shields, pastor of The Journey Within. Reverend Joseph is a compassionate minister and a highly accomplished evidential medium, spirit portrait artist, and spiritual teacher. He is internationally known for his accuracy and integrity in his spirit communication and commitment to others. Reverend Joe has dedicated his life to service of spirit and those seeking love, healing, and spiritual growth. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, Reverend Joe. Are you, oh, there you are. <laughs> Wanted to make sure there were no problems there. Nice to see we're you. Good. We're good. Get it all straightened out. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. um, we begin our healing, our services with spiritual healing. Spiritual healing is a laying on of hands in prayer to be used in conjunction with medical practice or advice. As we are meeting virtually, our healers that are present will be sending love and healing to all of you here and to those we are requesting prayers for. We are so grateful for all our healers who are with us today and who pray for everyone throughout the week and for all their dedication. If you would like to request healing for someone, please put their first name and last initial in the chat box. And these names will be forwarded to our healers for absentee healing. You may also call the church or email us if there is anyone during the course of the week you would like to request healing for, including pets, living beings, the planet, or global circumstances. We will open with prayer, followed by a period of quiet meditation. Please don't open your eyes until I ask you to after the meditation, as there are a series of songs that will be playing. If you would like to participate in the healing, please quiet yourself, focus on your breathing, and as you inhale, feel yourself boosting your own immune system, igniting the inner healer within. Please join me in prayer. I ask our divine Mother, Father, God, to restore all of us here and to all those that we are praying for today to perfect health. And may the feeling of love permeate every cell in our body. May we know that we are receiving the healing and the love that we need. May we believe in the divine power of love. To perfect health. I put my trust in this divine love and power of God. Amen. Gently open our eyes, connecting with a feeling of gratitude and thankfulness for the healing that we have received. As the week goes on, we will continue to remember and pray for those in need of healing. It is my pleasure now to invite, invite Reverend Joe to open the service with prayer, followed by song. Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you for the wonderful music, for the healing. It's absolutely brilliant. So thank you very much. We ask of the Father God to be with us and all those in the unseen world to blend with us in our hearts and our minds and our souls, to be with us today as we contemplate our lives and the lives of those around us in order to be one in love and understanding. All the tragedies and all the sufferings in the world, we as spiritualists aim to stand as light, as truth, to bring an example of what true religion really is, to be open to all, to be loving of all, to be firm and fair in all that we do, to know that justice really comes from the truth, the absolute truth. We will take our time in these summer days to sit quietly, to contemplate, to meditate, to come to the truth within us so that we may be that light and that strength within the world. 
For this, we thank you, and it is good for us to be together. Amen. I dedicate that last song to our much loved Reverend Janet Nohavid. And it is my pleasure now to introduce our pastor, Joe. Thank you, Bonnie. Wow. Thank you, Bonnie, very much, and uh, rightly so towards Janet. And um, a lot of us have raised up or gotten better in our lives for leaders like her and people like her and examples like her in our lives. So I really do appreciate that very much. And as I take on this mantle and those big shoes to fill, I suppose, as I move forward as pastor of this church, I watch everything we're doing and I kind of think of myself, where did I learn things along the way? Where did I become more loving or caring? Where did I change from maybe being the, the mess up of a teenager and, and other things in my life? And I look at that. I wrote this poem early on uh, as I became a spiritualist and I first started to watch what was going on and I was realizing I could draw pictures of spirit and things like this. So I, I wrote this poem. Job for the day, God. You take one side, I'll take the other. And together we can lift the spirit of hope for a friend, a brother, a sister, whom is lame to faith, disillusioned with life, broken by disappointment, alone to wandering, hungry or cold, young or frail, lost and confused. You take one side, God, and I'll take the other. Together we will lift them, lift them to see your face in the mirror of my soul. And with that prayer and commitment, um, I take on this role as well. And I watch things very closely. I, I kind of want to tell you a funny story. And it's, there's an old saying, it's, it's like, it's, it's not a laughing matter, but it doesn't matter if you laugh. And so it's kind of a horrific story from my past uh, when I was young and I don't know, stupid probably, I, I, but, but by the same token, um, it was a time when I was learning what language really means, what it means to say something and thinking before we speak, taking our time to meditate, to take time to understand what do these words mean? How are they going to be taken by others? And so it's really important for all of us in these summer months to take some time in the, in the, in the, in the, chill a little bit you know that they say down south set a spell take a little time for yourself and and think about what you're doing and where you're at and what's going on with you as spiritualists we have those wonderful principles of ours and one of the biggest mistakes i think we ever made was put them on a wall and like boom 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 and, and not have the understanding or the fullness of what each one of them means behind it so they can be taken wrong or taken out of context if you will or, or misinterpreted by just having one sentence thrown in front of us it really takes time to understand the principles of spiritualism to understand the true nature of this religion and the true wonderful possibilities for the future, the opportunities we have to heal the world, to help the world, and our interconnection and intertwinement with, with the unseen world. Those who have come before us, those who have been here, done this, earned the t-shirt, suffered the sufferings, did what they did, we stand on their shoulders. We stand on all their shoulders. And when we do so, we find ourselves heightened to seeing a better way, a new way. And sometimes we have our contemplation of mediumship and a conversation with spirit to say, what do I do? Where do I go? How do I, how am I going to manage this? What about that? You know, and the con, the, all the confusion of life, all the, the hassles of life begin to come a little bit more uh, distinctly understood, even if we are talking to a medium who's kind of being more psychic or telling us what to, what we should do or shouldn't do, we really need to to um, listen to the mediums who are speaking from the heart, speaking from the blendedness of the spirit world, the inspiration, the in spirit words that come, and then in those really find ourselves hearing the things that move our hearts and move our souls, not just tell us what to do hear the words for what their meaning and behind them is what the essence of them are not taking them blatantly or you know pragmatically in a way that's going to like throw us off or we're going to just we're going to decide what it means and we're going to do our own thing to really contemplate what does this really mean within my heart you know 
So there was a time, and I'll tell you the story, a time when I was renovating, um, I was in between a job right after college. I wanted to become a broker in the city. I eventually did become a broker in the city. Um, but for a while there to make money, I was doing construction. And so it was a rough crew. It was mostly mostly actors and musicians that were kind of looking for money on the side. And so we didn't have a whole lot of legalities around it you know like like workman's comp and all the rest we're just doing what we could do to make money and it was back when hoboken new jersey was going through a gentrification it was the beginning of that and so the buildings were very very in bad you know a lot of bad shape and things like that but but developers were given a, a tax incentive to save the stairways but you know gut the buildings out and rebuild them into apartments and things like that so my job was to have these 16 guys that we pulled together, actors and actresses and, you know, and um, musicians that were, you know, working at night or trying to get a gig or trying to become famous or whatever. But during the day, we would just tear out old horsehair plaster and tear out old boards and old wood and gut the buildings completely and try to save and brace up the staircase so every day we got filthy we got dirty and it was hot work in the summertime and we'd have those big shoots you know those big shoots that you see sometimes coming out of the sides of buildings that are being renovated and they go all the way up and this day this particular day we we're on the fifth floor is a five-story walk up and uh, an old brownstone building in Hoboken. And we're all very hot and it's very steamy. And a little after lunchtime, um, we're back working again, back and, you know, hammering away at things with crowbars and everything else. And, and uh, a man came in and he was very obstinate, very, very angry, very, um, he was screaming, he was yelling at one of the actors that was there and uh we didn't know what was going on and i'm the, you know i'm looking around at the employees and all, all the guys and so, who is this guy get him out of here get him out of the building you know and so so everybody's like we don't know what he's here for so he started screaming at this actor and i guess what had happened was this particular actor had owed him some money for whatever for illicit drugs or whatever the case may be but it wasn't a a fun or easy scene and then being being new to Hoboken myself I didn't know who I was dealing with or you know who this guy was two of the people on my crew were steady eddies they were there every day and they were wonderful people and one was we, we called him chief he was a local guy and he looked like that guy from one flew over the cooper's nest and played the Indian guy you know so he looked the same as him he was like just big huge six foot five you know brawny man with with you know he just he just loved to tear things apart and throw them down the chute you know and and this other guy cw who was who wore his leather jacket like a biker i don't think he owned a motorcycle but he had the keychain the whole nine yards and he 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 was a tough guy and he you know you you didn't want to mess with him and he was almost as big as keith himself so so we're they were on the crew every day well they came over to me and we were, the screaming was getting more and more, and I was getting very frustrated, and we certainly weren't getting any work done. And so I said, you guys got to take this outside. You know, you, you got a problem with him. You, you guys go outside, go across the street or something, but you can't stay here. And so they didn't care. They didn't look at me. You know, he's just, you know, flashing what I thought might have been a gun. And I was like, I was like, okay, okay, just, just you know, finish your business and, and get out of here you know this type of thing so they didn't they kept screaming at each other and everything so finally um cw and she come over to me and cw says to me goes goes what do you what do you want to what do you want to do with these guys and i said i just want to toss them out of here and that's the words i used i just want to toss them out of here now in my frustration and my things I, at the minute those words came out of my mouth i watched those two guys walk over and pick this guy up, this, this intruder, pick him up, carry him over to the chute on the fifth story window and throw him down the chute. So in a matter of seconds, I saw my whole life flash before my eyes because I said, I'm going to prison. This guy's going to get killed going down five stories into a dumpster. And down he went screaming and 
you heard the crashing and banging and crashing as he went down and he in within seconds he hits the he hits all the debris in the dumpster and we had a, a guy who who was a very small italian man from the neighborhood and he he'd sit on the edge of the dumpster with a hose and hose down all the dust so it wouldn't get on people's cars and stuff so this man hit the thing and he's just hosing him down and next thing you know that the drug dealer or whatever jumped out of the jumped out of the dumpster fell onto the ground and limped down the road and we never saw him again so luckily he didn't get killed luckily i didn't have to go to prison for giving this giving this order and i was terrified the whole time but why am i telling you a story about my own stupidity well i'm telling you because just toss them out of here what's the power of words words count words matter how we say something when we say it in what mood we're saying it in speaking without thinking it through coming off and yelling at our children yelling at people yelling you know getting getting angry on the road all these different things as spiritualists we have certain principles that tell us take our time make sure you're saying what you mean make sure it, it synchronizes with your own heart and your own truths before you spew it out and start saying it understand the ramifications of what you're saying and how many people it actually affects around you and how it can affect the whole situation taking your time to think it through before you bring it into existence because we are all leaders we are all powerful in ourselves and we can say things that powerfully either hurt or help someone so we can always choose to have God take one side and us take the other. In other words, we take personal responsibility for what we do completely. And in that personal responsibility and what we do, we can be powers of example and helpful to change this world. Spiritualism, more than any other religion, in my opinion, and I know a lot of them, has an opportunity and, in my opinion, an obligation at this point to come together to change the world, to change the way people see what spirit, the spirit world's all about, what the shoulders that we stand on, that we can make it better. We can evolve as human beings. We don't have to live the way we're living. We don't have to kill each other. We don't have to have all the problems we see on the six o'clock news. Now, it may not happen in my time, but I'm determined within my role to help move it forward or at least enlighten what can happen. And so in this, I'm saying to you, it really is important to know that. We have another principle that says compensation and retribution for all the good and evil deeds done here on earth. We've got to watch those words because on a wall, that can scare people. What about evil? What about those things? What is compensation? What, what do you mean retribution? If you look up those words, you're going to find that Compensation usually talks about money. It talks about being given something back, where retribution is about punishment. And, and those things in, on this surface can kind of sound pretty scary. The word evil is often taken out of context or out of what it is, which is an immorality, doing something against the grain of our own, our own conscious, doing something against the grain of our own understanding and our, our knowing within us that is truth and untruth, and doing something that might be deemed in Hollywood or other places as supernatural. In other words, the devil made me do it. Well, that taken in that context kind of takes away from the principle of personal responsibility. We have a personal responsibility to listen to the inner voice of our own, the language of our hearts. And are we listening to things that bring us forward, that make us better, that that help us to help others, to be part of the whole, to be part of what is good in the world? Or are we kind of selfishly and self-centeredly going a different direction, doing what we want to do because hooray for me, you know? So we kind of look at these things and say, okay, where do these principles really sit? Compensation is not necessarily money it's not necessarily but it is it is giving back an understanding a fullness a totality a, a completion of all the good we've done in this world in other words 
when we talk about mediumship, we, people think we're always talking about death and the dead, when in fact we're talking about living and living well and being ready for that other side, being more to be even more of help on the other side because we don't have retributions to deal with. We have lived our lives well and honestly, and so we can live on a higher plane and a higher way and a much more comfortable way of helping others here and hereafter. Retribution is not necessarily punishment, and it often comes, it often comes to us as uh, in the Latin, a retribution is to, is to try again or to uh, assign again, if you will. In other words, being given the same task over and over again until we get it. And sometimes in life, we see that like that happened. I did it again. I can't believe I'd gotten that, another relationship like that last one. I can't believe I did this. I can't believe it. But, but the fact of the matter is, isn't that the gift? That's the gift of God. That's the gift of spirit. Here you go. We'll give you another try. Maybe this time you'll get it. Maybe this time you'll stay away from abusive relationships. Maybe this time you'll actually say no. You know, I don't want to do that. This is my life. I'm going to live more holy and more high in my life. And that's the way it is. And so as we take on personal responsibility as spiritualists, we begin to evolve in a much more rapid way, in a personal way, and in a singular way. But in that way, we become an intricate part of a greater good an intricate part of all who live, everyone we meet, that people see the reflection of God in our souls. They see it in our smile. They see it in the way we handle problems. They see it in the fact that we don't bounce or react or start screaming, that we take our time, we think about it, we say, what's a better way to handle this particular situation? How can I be patient, tolerant, and understanding in my life? Spiritualism offers us all of this in a beautiful, beautiful way. And as we listen to mediums and we listen to the, heal the healing music like Bonnie played today, we can calm our souls, calm our spirit and say, okay, how important is being right all the time? You know, there's an old saying as well that says, do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? You know? Trying to be the, all that in a cup of tea to people isn't necessarily being the leader or being, being happy. Being content with, I've spoken the truth, I'm walking the truth, and I live within truth, and I live for the truth. Then there is more than happiness, but a continued joy in life. I wish all of you this week to pause and stop before you think. Think fully through. Take some time to meditate, just a few minutes a day to say, is this right? Ask God what God would have you do. Never mind what your reaction wants to do. And do what God wants you to do. It'll make for an easier life. It'll make for a happier life. Even in the pain and sufferings of all around us, we can take it with some patience and some tolerance and know that that compensation is there for us. The compensation of no matter what horrors you've been through in life, no matter what pain you have suffered and or might be suffering now, that there is a better place. There is a heaven above. There is no death or there is no love. I love you all. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful week. Peace. Thank you so much, um, Pastor Joe. That was so beautiful. And really just a reminder to take those moments and consult with the divine before we act or react and to really work on finding that love and truth within ourselves to be able to share it with the world. So thank you for, for that. Um, we come right now to our time for uh, donations and announcements. There is a scan box, as you see on the screen for your convenience, and we appreciate all donations, great and small. You may also send in a, don a donation or visit the church website if you are so moved to do so. Divine loving spirit, you have blessed us with this beautiful spiritualist community, which is the journey within. We ask you to bring us the means of keeping it alive and growing. We give thanks to all gifts, great and small. Amen.
There is also the opportunity to become a member of the Journey Within, and you can find that information on the Journey Within uh, website. And we invite you to join in our other services. We have a student service tonight. We have a Wednesday healing um, and message service, and an in on not online, but uh, in present uh, service at the Journey Within every Sunday as well. And we'd like to thank all our volunteers at this time, especially Reverend Karen and Reverend Patty. And it is through our volunteers that the journey in our community continue to thrive. So I'd like to just um, share some announcements of some courses going on this week or in the upcoming weeks. And as well, there are um, opportunities to learn mediumship and psychic development and that information as well. Our weekly classes is available online. But in the upcoming weeks on July 20th, we have Trans Healing with Simone Key. On the 21st, we have the Effective Personal Medium with Christine Morgan. On the 22nd, we have Edgar Casey on Developing Intuition by Kevin Tedeschi. And our Reverend Joe will be giving Summer Sundays for Soul Serenity um, starting on June, uh, July 23rd. So all are welcome to take place in any of these courses or classes. It is now our time for our demonstration of mediumship. As a spiritual church, we believe that life is continuous. And through our demonstration of mediumship, we seek to reunite those here with those who have crossed over. If you could take 90 to 100% of the evidence, please raise your hand. And if some of you can raise your hands right now, thank you just to make sure it works as sometimes there may be problems. And for whatever reason, as happens at times, if you're not able to unmute when the medium asks to speak with you, then please you know, write in the chat box. If you have difficulty even writing in the chat box or not able to completely, um, then please let us know that as well in the chat. Because sometimes people connect in and out through the chat as well. Um, as Reverend Joe goes on, if you cannot take all the evidence as he moves forward, please lower your hands so he may get to the correct uh, sitter as quickly as possible. And obviously it is up to the medium to discern who he is with. If you are invited to speak, please unmute yourself and come in the chat and come in the main room. Uh, we will now have a uh, piece of music and then we will start our demonstration. I'll ask all of you to please join me when I say the message prayer. Do not stand at my grave and weep. I am not there. I do not sleep. I am a thousand winds that blow. I am the diamond glints on snow. I am the sunlight on ripened grain. I am the gentle autumn rain. When you awaken with morning's hush, I am the swift uplifting rush of quiet birds in circled flight. I am the soft stars that shine at night. Do not stand at my grave and cry. I am not there. I did not die. And now I invite our pastor Joe to take over with the demonstration of me. Thank you. Bonnie, I'm gonna switch my camera, okay? I'm gonna to have to uh, take the sharing away from, there you go. All right, here we go. All right, I hope everybody can see this, or at least get some sense of it. Um, pay attention to the information first, uh, the, the drawing. I could be talking about one pe person and drawing another, so be um, tuned to that, if you will. And uh, if you can take most of the information, then um, raise your little electronic hand so we know who you are, and Bonnie will help me kind of identify that, I hope. And so um, we'll go from there, so thank you. Almighty God, who is you down upon us, innocent and through us, we ask you to surround everyone today with the white light of your love and to pierce our hearts and souls with that love. And as you do, I ask loved ones to be with me if all possible, especially those around the world, the folks here today. And as you step in with me, ask you to use me any way you wish, as long as you do it, love, light, and respect. Please show yourselves to me, help me understand who you are, what you were like in life, what you didn't like, what happened to you. Any information you have for those folks here today for their upliftment, the discernment of their well-being, their purpose, their path, their happiness and joy would be appreciated. And I ask this in the name of all that is holy, only angels, saints, teachers, guides, love and support that have come before us to pave the way. And I ask this day for nothing but your highest and best, your peace, patience, and tolerance, your insight and well-being, your strength, your fortitude, your love, your light. 
but especially your truth. Amen. I have a gentleman with me that uh, passed a little younger than I am. I want to say early 60s, um, late 70s. I, I keep getting 63 in my head, but it's early 60s. I know that to be true. It may have been that he was ill for a while. I do feel like he was did not take very good care of himself in life. Um, he liked his he liked his meals, and he he liked uh, he. I do believe he drank a little harder when he was younger than when he was older. I do think that he smoked for a while in his life as well. He shows me a, a pack of cigarettes, so I, I want to mention that if I if I may. Actually, I saw a pack of Viceroy's, so I know that. that that's important somehow. I also want you to know that he did put on a little weight in his old age, a little bit of, you know, kind of a little bit of girth, if you will. But he had a great smile. He did. He had good intentions. He wanted everybody to be okay. He loved his family dearly. And I feel like he's, uh, you know, I feel like he was a dad and that, that he had, you know, he had his times where he might have been a bit harsh but he he always wanted the highest and best for everybody around him he really did he, he's not he's not so selfish or self-centered that he was unmindful of other people's happiness but i do think that he had troubles in his life you know um with his own self self-worth and things like that but i know that towards the end he was not well and he was dealing with a couple of different things going on but i do think that there was a cancer situation that he avoided at one point but then something else came back and i want to say that the lungs are definitely affected i feel most pain in my left lung that seems to be the the um nature of it i'm going to begin to draw the man i believe i see here so i'm just going to kind of say to you that that he's uh he's 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 got this this kind of face that that I, I do believe is just weathered in time, you know. It just kind of kind of has that that way about it. And and he has these the way he's looking at me is 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 as if he's trying to get to somebody to say he's sorry for uh, kind of being obstinate towards the end. I think he was not, you know, the medication and things was not easy. And so as he was passing i think he had a difficulty kind of making sense of things if you will so i do think that there's a little bit of dementia i don't think it's you know completely out of it or or that but i think he was suffering from a little bit of you know more a little more than forgetfulness if you will um like not knowing where he was and things towards the end um he's got a little bit of a bump in his nose he's 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 uh he's definitely definitely a well, if you were to know him, and I keep asking for, for this, but if you would know him, you would know a, you would know a John around him. Uh, I know that my full name is being spoken, but you would know John around him. You'd also uh, understand that what I want to say, I almost feel like there's a, he still has some hair. Uh, he still had some hair in his head. I do believe he may have he may have had some military experience or, or either policeman, fireman. There's like in a regimentation in his past, so I know that that's important as well. I think this tragedy is where he lost his best friend when he was a bit younger in his 40s. So I want to mention that as well. I do want to mention a Stephen around this as 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 I may. And um, he keeps talking about a Carol or Carol, and so I just need to mention that as well. If anybody can understand this, I'd appreciate you raising your hand, just if you understand any pieces of this um, as he comes through here. You do have one hand up. Okay, may I speak to that person, please? Kim, I'm gonna allow her to talk, there she is. Hi, how are you? Hi, Kim, how are you today? Good, thank you. Thank you, and how do you understand this so far? Um, it's my dad. His name is John. Um, everything you said is spot on, except I'm not sure about the Viceroy brand, but he did smoke yeah. intermittently, like when he was stressed, but it wasn't like a regular thing, but everything's spot on. Good. And do you recognize the picture somewhat? Yeah, and he, and he died of cancer. And um, it looks a little bit like a combination of his father, who was a little <laughs> bit like a little more bit. rounder in the face. Yeah, right. And your grandfather was a tough guy, wasn't he? Yes. Yeah. Very I, tough. I, yeah. I feel like he would have been the kind of guy that 
you know, wouldn't have taken baloney from anybody. No. <laughs> you know, just as that way around them. So I mm-hmm. feel um I feel I want to put this kind of lazy, lazy college shirt on. I don't want to wear a tie at all, though. I don't Yeah, wear, no, he was very you know, relaxed. Just just relaxed and everything. I you know, Yeah, kinda... and he had a sister, Carol in spirit, and I have a friend Carolyn in spirit yep. as well. And you mentioned both names. Good. Okay. And what about Stephen? That that was a, a mention. Um, your... I had an uncle Stephen on, but through marriage, so it was like um his sister June's husband. So he could have passed. I haven't heard anything. Okay, well, about him in a while. Mention of him, so it could be just prayers for him. Okay, so okay, we're not going to put too much on that, but we'll we'll leave it leave it that way, if you will. And um, you know, I I, I like I like your dad's honesty. He, I think he I think he would have told people what he thought you know um, he's very honest you know, he just mm-hmm. he just said it like it is you know he's not gonna not gonna mince words and he's not gonna get, play games with people you know mm-hmm. i know i know his eyesight wasn't the greatest he kind of but he doesn't want right. me to them, so no he didn't wear them regularly he, yeah, he doesn't, probably he doesn't, didn't want to be he doesn't like them at all so i'm just gonna no. if you will as well um you know i i do feel I do feel there was a lot of the things he wanted to do in life that he didn't get to do, but you know, True. he never cared too much about it. You know, like there was some travel he wanted to do those. Mm-hmm. He didn't get to do them because he, he passed too young, basically. So. Right. And, and you were spot on on the age. He died when he was 63. So I believe that he, he comes to you today to really just uh, give you, give you the love you, you deserve. And, and um, he, you are very important to him. Um, he, like, he trusted you more than, do you have a brother that's here? I had three sisters. Three sisters. Okay. Cause it's something about, I don't know, there's, there's a male here that, that, that he's just saying, keep your eyes open. Keep, keep, keep your breath. I mean, I'm not trying to cause trouble here, but I just saying, mm. keep your eyes wide open. In other words, is what he's saying. Okay. So okay. I just want to, I just want to say that he's, he's definitely there for you for your upliftment and really wanting to let you know that um that he's here for you okay okay so, thank you that with you with light and love and i'll um i'll get this if you want this i can take a photo it's fine yeah, thank okay. you you can get the original if you want okay but thank you so much god bless thank you, thank you. okay we're going on this one So I want to talk a little bit about this woman that's with me because um, she is kind of poking me, almost like she was touchy. She would have, she would have, you know, touched your shoulder or pushed, squeezed your arm or something like, almost like coming up behind you and squeezing you. How are you? You know, how are you? It's like she said to me, and and she had this wonderful way about her. But it was to me that you know I don't like to be touched all the time it was a little scary at first when she came up and kind of almost felt like she grabbed my my left arm from behind how are you um but she seems to be sincere but the over helpfulness you know she's like constantly jumping in and taking on other tasks or taking on other things um wanting to be the volunteer wanting to be helpful um kind of the mother of the neighborhood if you will kind of the mother of the of the church of, of the church she belongs to you know she's got a lot of faith and she definitely definitely expounded it but she didn't uh not evangelizing it she's just kind of showing it and showing up she's very very organized she'd like to be the organizer she liked to be the leader and things like that she liked to be in control and that's very very important about her i do feel like this woman as well did not live to be elderly she did not get up in age i feel like she got ill and she was ill for she keeps telling me 16 months but i want to say i almost think my dyslexia has the six upside down it's almost like 19 months almost two years in other words and so as i see her i believe she held herself well she you know in her in the way she kind of um just stood stood up straight she does not she's not overly abused uh, uh you know big at all 
but but she's she kind of has this way about her where she's solid and and yet there's a tininess to, to, to long fingers almost like she could have played piano but I, I don't hear a piano right now but I see the long fingers she definitely used to like to work with her hands package things up that type of thing doll things up ribbons and things like that were very very important she liked to have things look pretty in other words and so as I begin to draw her I do think she's a mom and I do think she's she 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 would have um, spoken her mind, especially when it came to the children. She she was definitely a worry wart. So she not not overly so, not like showing it all the time. But she kept her hair quite short, and um, and she's the kind of person that that you could rely on if you asked her for help. She would definitely follow through. She's not somebody that would drop the ball. She would she would definitely have her have her place in things and. Um, and do that. So I want to kind of just um, begin to draw her here and the woman that's impressed upon me. So I've not really seen her yet as much as I'm kind of impressed to draw this woman and and hopefully she can help me kind of see her her essence and who she is. Um, she has a, a, a wonderful kind of a contemporary hairdo here. So it, and not not a lot of colors or anything, but she did try to color her hair. I I want to say that there's something something with her pancreas that that was. Uh, I I do think that she may have had cancer at, at a point, and that she went down. That she fought the fight so well that she lived longer than actually they thought in the first place. Um, and then the, she thought she would have more time, and she was kind of ripped off for some time here if you will and that's my term not hers but she's kind of feels like she was cheated out of some time in life if you will um definitely dying a little younger than she should have so so i i can see that that nature in it um i want to also say to you if you know her you would you would understand come to me again with that understand a Kathy or Catherine around her. Okay, so that's important to her um, because it's being impressed upon me right now. Um, she was one who wore her makeup uh, well, but not overly so. And she did have some jewelry, but she's not overly adorned with it. You know, she kind of, she, had, she I asked her about her jewelry. She said, well, I have a drawer full of junk, but I didn't have, you know, the fine jewelry I had was very few and far between. A couple of rings that she owned were valuable. So I do need to mention that. Um, can anybody take any pieces of this so far? Are there any hands up, Bonnie? No? Okay. Not yet. Okay. So oh, yeah. Uh, Kelly. I'm sorry. There is Kelly. Okay. So, Kelly, could you unmute and tell me what part of it you understand? Because it feels like. Hi, good morning. I can take uh, the Kathy, if that was her name. I can take the pancreas. Uh, she had pancreatic cancer. It was a quick death. She died young. This is a spiritual mentor of mine. Mm -hmm. I and can take the always showing up, the mothering, the, uh, yeah, she was always there for everybody. And why she keep giving me 56? Is that her age or is that when you met her when she was 56 or? I would say she was, she was 59 when she died and I did know her several years before that. So possibly. Okay. Could be my dyslexia is tipping that upside down again. See, amazing how it happens sometimes. Do you recognize the picture at all? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, the short the cropped short hair. Kind of cropped like hair that. Not, not quite a pixie, but you know, I, I I've I've been telling myself I should go to I should go to hairdressing school just so I can learn how to <laughs> how to draw all of this. But she seems to have a serious look on her face right now, and I think that's more that she she was she could be very serious in life about 
living life and and she liked people to do the right thing she was she's an honest person herself she she gave it as it as she got it you know what i'm saying she she wasn't full of baloney or full of big stories do you understand that yes yes she always told you how it was exactly sure. thank you Joe, you do have another hand right now, just to let me know. Okay. I'll let the other person speak, but I think I am with the first person. And what's the first person's name, Kelly? Kelly, yes. could you keep listening, please? And, and Okay. Yes. And it is... I just brought in Catherine. 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 What part Hi. Of... Hi, Catherine. How are you today? I'm all right. All right. All right. All right. All right. What part of it do you want to stay in? Um, a very good friend of mine. I'm an RN and I took care of her on her last days of pancreatic cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, her name was Diane. She lived in New York City. Um, uh, Catherine, I'm going to stop you there just, just so you don't give too much information for another okay. meeting long sure. later on. Um, I, I'm not, I don't, I know I'm not with you. Just by this, it's, it's okay though, but I appreciate you chiming in. Okay. Sure. Thank you very much. Um, and it's re really, it's it's a connection to the sound of the voice with Kelly. It's almost like, like, like I want to speak to Kelly more and get a little bit more with Kelly. Kelly, would you continue to work with me, please? Absolutely. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. You know, Kelly, this woman is kind of saying to you that she wants you to, to, to live life to the fullest and not let it go by, you know? Like she's with you to kind of help you move move forward and move move fast and 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 into and almost like self-love if you will okay so i need to mention that and i don't want to get all psychic with you i just want to tell you what she's saying okay and her caring about you but you do understand her right yes and did she wear glasses sometimes she had them on a chain yes because i, I kind of have this uh this chain coming down here with the you know the those little little chains that where the the glasses come down here on on her on her chest, if you will. Do you understand that? Yes, so it's, she it's, always was misplacing them. Mm -hmm. Readers or something, right? Yes. And she's like color. She, I, I noticed that her that her blouse is, is is very colorful in the way it is. You know, like flowers and stuff, not just that you know european black uh traditional thing but kind of like a, a nice colored color thing here do you understand that bright colors yes yes full of life right definitely definitely okay good and i know my name's being spoken so there's definitely a joe around her a joey <laughs> yeah. yes that was her son-in-law mm -hmm. that seems <laughs> but the son-in-law kind of made her laugh at times right and yes sometimes that is ridiculousness if you will so she's just around to help okay as she comes forward f further so i want you to know that that even though her life was short she's still here she's only a thought away she wants to help you and um you don't you're not thinking about her all the time but she would like you to because she can be very very helpful and if you just kind of put put her in your thoughts she'll come close and help you help you um have a better better days of it okay um and i i want to say to you don't don't let that pass okay um you've noticed also did, did somebody lose a dog did you lose a dog i have lost yes i've lost a dog uh-huh okay there's something about your dog that she has she has met the dog <laughs> and she's not a, necessarily a big dog care you know she's not a caretaker for dogs or anything like but but she she said this one's special and she has them okay so i just thank want to make you. all right thank you so much now one more thing before you go okay yes why do i want to say canterbury or canterbury lane or something <laughs> that was a street that i used to live on when she knew me Okay, then she loves you. Canterbury Drive South. There you go. She wants you to know she loves you. It is her, and she's with you, 
let her love you let her be there with you and keep smiling even though she's i'm having a little trouble making her smile here but she definitely has a smile and she has a little bit of a cheshire smile like she's up to something once in a while <laughs> okay so we'll just leave it that yeah. way all right god thank bless you so much you take a picture thank you. Can you take a snapshot of that yes sir thank you so much and, and god bless you and reverend bonnie and all you guys do thank you appreciate it thank you very much so thank you bonnie for allowing me to do this today appreciate it and i'll turn it back over to you okay okay thank you so much for that beautiful connection with spirit it touched us all um so thank you everyone once again for joining us we will end our service by asking our pastor joe uh, to say the closing prayer for today thank you Dear God, and all those who we have lost that have gone to the other side, that have gone through that transition, we may have lost you in the physical, but in our heart, in our mind, we hold you tight, we hold you close, we love you dearly, we miss you terribly, but we know that you're only a thought away. We ask you to be with us today and throughout this week, to walk with us, to talk with us, to speak with everything you are, the last resort, we'll hear words, but we'll feel your presence, feel your essence with us. We thank you for the love that you give us. Know that we love you and that we try each day to be more loving of others, more caring of others, more patient, tolerant, and understanding. We thank you for allowing us to stand on the shoulders of your experience so that our lives become even better each day. We thank you for all those family and friends and all those around us and those in this community that are supporting of us, healing of those maladies that we suffer. And we ask for clarity. We ask for peace, but especially your truth. Have the best week you've ever had, everybody. Love you all. Thank you very much. We love you and we are so thankful for your presence here today and we look forward to seeing you next Sunday during our service. Good night, good evening, good Thank day. Thank Bye. you, buddy. great music by the way, did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.